did you guys ever think about raising capital or was it just a function of you guys had maybe saved some up and just decided to use that and go for profitability right away? We started our business with our savings. So Sarah and I invested 25K each um, in the beginning and investment was not really a priority for us because our thought was that if we're able to deploy this capital in a strategic way and really grow our business by you know using creative methods like reaching out to editors and tapping into our social media and really trying these different avenues to grow and awareness and revenue of our brand, then we would be able to make it work and turn a profit in time to be self-sustaining. Shark Tank at the time wasn't really because of a financial need. It was more to, I mean, we were huge fans of the show, still are, and we wanted to find a strategic advisor and partner that could help us. And that's really what propelled us to go on the show. Plus, just the fact that it's just an incredible platform for entrepreneurs. And so a lot of people think that we are funded by Shark Tank post the show, um, but actually we amicably parted ways after accepting uh, Robert's offer initially on the show. And I think it was the best decision for both of us. Did you ever, do you keep in touch with them? Or I, I know you guys were on QVC. And so are those relationships still something that you guys tap into? Or was it just, oh, all right, cool. You know, and we've had many companies. I think most of the companies that have come on our podcast that have gone through Shark Tank, I would say A most good of them chunk. didn't accept at the end. And so during like the DD process, it <laughs> really? broke up. Yeah. I mean, it was an incredible experience. We couldn't have asked for more. We actually aren't in touch with any of the sharks, but I will say it was the life-changing experience for for both of us and the business. It happened actually right around December, right before the holiday rush, which is also incredible timing for us. That helps a lot. It helped a lot. We had to descend on our Brooklyn warehouse and all pack day and night just to meet the demand. Um, But overall, just having that opportunity too of these incredible business people dissect your business for a full hour for you and ask you pointed questions and thought provoking, you know, questions was just in itself an incredible experience. So you mentioned that you were looking primarily for a financial advisor of sorts by going on the show. And from what we know, I know that you are never aware of who the shark is going to be or who the sharks are going to be until you get onto the show. But I'm sure that, you know, in your mind, you must have had some idea of who would be your, your top choice or top choices to work with. What was that like for you guys going on the show? And Lori. Yeah. And, and who would that have been? I mean, Robert's in cybersecurity. The alignment there is non-existent in my view. Yeah, I mean, no one's ever asked this question, so this is really interesting. If you ever have seen our episode, you'll actually see that it's very obvious because we <laughs> we're, we both were trying to make eye contact with Mark Cuban and we kept asking him again <laughs> if he's interested. I did see so, that. Like, you were like, uh, we want to see and wait what Mark has in store. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, looking back, you know, we made it almost too obvious. <laughs> but, you know, if you watch, you can't deny that he was initially our top choice. <laughs> um, you never know. I mean, to your point, you never are aligned or anything. You don't even know how, like, which sharks specifically are even going to sit on that specific day because there's multiple and they take turns. And obviously, we admire and respect all of the sharks, but we were hoping to have, you know, potentially some female sharks as well, because they might understand beauty a little bit more. And then, of course, we were huge fans of Mark Cuban. So that's how um, we went in and we ended up shaking hands with Robert. And he was fantastic. He was so passionate about about our company. So in that vein, I know that you got offers from, I believe it was Mr. Wonderful, Barbara and Robert. I'm pretty sure that it was like Barbara and Mr. Wonderful offered you somewhere in the range of what you were asking for, but at around 45 to 50% equity. And then I think Robert came in at around 30 or something like that. In your head, what were you willing to go to? What, what were like the limits of what it's you a were lot willing of equity. to? Yeah, that's a lot of equity. What were you kind of uh, in your head? Like, were you willing to go to? Because I think you guys settled on like, what, 25%? Like, was that like within your range or was that the edge of your range? It was on the higher side. Yeah. Didn't we go in thinking like our initial offer was like 10% of the company or something? And yeah, it was, there was a big gap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys look at yourself and just go, yes? Like like in when it's happening in real time, you have to agree as co-founders. And so So we had a little conversation in Korean 
because of it in front of the sharks. And our Korean friends called us afterwards when it aired. They thought it was hilarious because we were just literally having a live discussion in front of the sharks. <laughs> And then Kevin or Mr. Wonderful was actually in the background. This got edited out. Being like, what are they saying? <laughs> I believe They're that. talking right now. I'm surprised the editors didn't add subtitles to it for the broadcast. <laughs> I know. I know. I mean, it was pretty like basic things. We were saying like, are you okay with that? No. Like, okay, yes. It was simple things, but all in Korean because we wanted to align before we, you know, responded at all. <laughs> you're not given any time though. I mean, you're kind of put on the spot. And we also were told from numerous sources that if you, if you don't take the deal, also, you might not be on air. There were a lot of just complicated layers for us to think about in that short span of time. And obviously, we were excited. We loved Robert and we wanted to make it work. So it was a big gap, but we were compromising. You said that you guys walked away amicably. What was it specifically, though, that you guys couldn't come to terms with that kind of led you both to walk away. The percentage is what it seems like to me. That's a massive amount of the company to give away. So the percentage was one part of it, but I mean, we had shook hands on that. So I think to some degree made a little peace with it. It's more, um, I think at the time, Robert was very busy with different projects, different investments. He was going on Dancing with the Stars and there were all these other things that were happening in the back. And I think throughout our conversations, once again, our focus was really on having someone be very involved with guiding us with strategy and advice. And I think those elements weren't 100% aligned. But ultimately, once again, it was incredibly amicable. They are incredible partners and they would have been incredible partners regardless. But for our business at the time, it just wasn't the right decision. Is he well versed in skincare? Like, am I, am I missing something? Like, is he, does he have a portfolio of companies in this world or was this just, he liked you guys? No, but he's opera. very well versed in consumer goods and D2C. Right. And I think those elements are very transversal regard, regardless, especially for a digitally native brand. So there would have been some interesting synergies there. So since you didn't end up with Rob, Robert as sort of a financial advisor, was there someone else that you did eventually find to kind of fulfill that role? Outside of Shark Tank or right. in general? Yeah, um, we've had numerous sort of, you know, inquiries and inbound emails and requests for meetings with investors. And I think at the end of the day for us, what's most important is to find the best strategic partner. And we have been profitable since month three of our business and we broke even very soon. So with all of the product development that we're doing, it's you know, fueled by the profit that we're actually making from our business. So we're not you know, necessarily in a rush. Obviously, if it's the right partner that can help accelerate our growth, then we would be very happy to partner with that person. But we're you know, having conversations right now. Does Sephora or any of these companies have like an incubator of some kind where they have like a fund or a portfolio associated with their brand that kind of primes companies like yours for acquisition or even just for launch? Does that exist? I don't know if it's really with that particular end game in mind, but I think just Sephora, a great partnership with them helps to just elevate your awareness and your standing in the market. And so that just naturally then segues to whatever exits brands are each planning for their own uh, companies. Once again, we can't say enough good things about the partnership with them. And they've just been really great friends, advisors, and have guided us through this process. So. It's been really great partnership. 